All right, the first point is that money is power. And we, we, we still had slavery 100 years ago, so the people that are in power, they don't really, they don't really care about the workers. They, I mean, it's not their specialty. And we need mathematicians and not politicians and scientists to figure this stuff out logically because, you know, the, the politicians, they, they just want to put a Band-Aid on it. They don't really want to deal with it because it's probably terrifying if, if, if it's not their specialty. So I've been really putting myself into trying to figure out a problem solver for the economy problem and for the poverty problem, the unemployment problem, so that um, the politicians can go back to making, keeping, keeping us safe from other countries and worry less about, you know, all these economic hardships that people are facing. I don't think we should keep throwing money on the fire because I think that eventually the inflation is going to get so bad that we could have a collapse like the Romans did, like like all these all these countries did before us, like even like Turkey recently. And we don't want that, you know. I mean, we, we're better than that. We're the United States. We, we shouldn't be doing that. So uh, quickly, I'm going to run down this list of 10 things we can do to stop all this nonsense. So please just stay with me, guys. I'm trying to make it short and, and painless. This is how we can all profit. The government's going to get more money. The rich are going to get richer. The people who can't afford a place to live will probably be able to afford a place to live. And the people who are middle class might end up being upper class. Everything will just expand out like a slinky. So there'll still be a class system. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do away with anything. I'm just trying to fix this problem that we're having. I don't think that rich people really want to keep us down. They want us to all be, be able to have that pursuit of happiness. They, I don't think they should throw all the money in the world at everybody either because then who's going to work? So I think that we should try and get everybody up to about, you know, a, a whatever level we're going to need to be at so that people can afford a place to live and, and a car so that they have a chance of, of getting that job. Because if you don't have a place to live, and you don't have a vehicle, then your your options become like this block or that block, or you know, hopefully you live near a bus, and not everyone lives near a bus link, so it just gets really difficult from there. You can imagine how difficult it could get. Um, let's see. So really quick, the uh, so we don't need as many people. We just don't need as many workers because it's like mostly a population problem. You know, we're having a lot of kids and I'm not going to make any, any real suggestions on how we can stop the population problem, except I think maybe it, it might be better if we could incentivize uh, couples, people who have children together to stay together. Um, I think maybe it's almost, it's almost easier to break up with the person if you're not like you know married and have like some sort of written agreement or something like that um especially a lot of a lot of women they don't want to give that guy the chance to be a dad and i, I don't really think that that's right i think that uh, especially little boys they need their dad you know we don't need we don't need a bunch of little bastards running around that don't know what they're doing don't know how to how to work how to look at life how to how to deal with things you know, we need, we need strong, strong men and uh, strong women in this country. So uh, also I got the, uh, the government made a lot of jobs and they have made jobs. They, they're always saying we made, we made a million jobs or, or whatever, you know, they're always saying they made a bunch of jobs and they have, but it's 1.9 million people every year that become old enough to have a job and they haven't made 1.9 jobs in a year. They haven't even broke even with, with the amount of jobs that we still needed. So they, they just haven't been able to do that. And back, back in Roosevelt's uh, presidency, they got like 7 million jobs or something. I don't want to misquote, it might have been like 6 or 7, but they, they were able to put everyone back to work. And they had that whole New Deal thing, but we lost money on that. I think the government... If they put everyone to work, they should be able to profit from that. And the government already does that. They have lots of things that they do where people work for them and 
money comes in. It's revenue. I mean, it's not big revenue in most cases. Like the, you know, you go buy a stamp at the post office or something like that. Maybe maybe they don't even make any revenue. But they have like works projects. They 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 have things that they they used to do that they, I'm sure they made some money off of. But we should make it like a business where they make a little bit of money. Our government's in debt. If they're paying people decent, there's no reason that they can't have some things that you can do. Like, you, they might need more people to answer phones at the RMV. You know how long it takes to get through at the RMV? I'm sure there's lots of rich people that still got to deal with the RMV, and they wish there was more employees at the RMV or something. You know, there's places where people are needed to work, and then there's places where they could actually turn a profit. We could get resources out of the ground, probably in a more environmentally friendly way than corporations might. We could, you know, sign it into some sort of federal regulations that we're going to go out and we're not going to frack and we're not going to, we're not going to cause pollution because we're going to have the, uh, the capital to buy the actual machines that you need, the expensive machines that use, uh, that refilter the water that you're using when you're doing the mining. And they can make sure that they only do mining in places that are federal land. And they could make it so that when they're doing that, <clears throat> they do it in the most environmentally friendly way. And they don't dig deep through the, through the water line and, and screw everybody's water up and kill the earth. I think that the government would be great at collecting some resources. And that's pretty much free money for the government right there. And uh, having a factory or two. Just, just to have a bare bones skeletal framework for the government would be really smart because if the, if we were ever invaded or if uh, we had this pandemic get worse or if we you know God forbid there was there was uh, a famine right if we had more than we do because we have like the PX and military stores and stuff like that if we had more of that you know maybe just have one of those in every city, like like um, selling a Walmart of things like they already do. And they get those things from all the people who produce things. They could have their own line. There's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, while I'm on that subject, like DARPA could make a cell phone. If I'm going to have a cell phone spying on me and I have a choice between it being China and my own government, I think that I would want it to be my own government because they do need to stop people from com committing horrendous crimes and, and terrorist acts and things like that. So, you know, I mean, I'm not a huge supporter of the Patriots Act, but it's already there, and we could make, it, we could make a phone. DARPA could... DARPA makes some crazy stuff. Look it up online. It's, it's, worth, it's worth a look. Uh, so another thing I got is... Uh, if the U.S. is going to bail out the insurance and credit institutions anyways then they may as well provide the health insurance for workers because they can take that money right out of their paychecks and they could actually profit the same way that insurance companies profit, but they could put it all in a fund because that's what the insurance companies don't do. The, the, the money's gone, basically. Everyone pulls the money in. They say, we only need this much money. And then there's a hurricane or something and all those insured houses need their need their money at the same time, and they go out of business. That's what they do. If it was the government, then they could manage it more carefully so that they don't lose money. And they, they wouldn't have to touch that money because they print the money. But they'd be getting that money back out of circulation, which this, this is something that I'm, I'm sure not everybody knows, but the, um, the Federal Reserve, they're a private institution because they don't want you know government to be big government. And so the government, basically, they got all the gold. But they give an IOU to the Fed. The Fed brings the IOU, which is the treasuries. Which are, they, they sell treasuries to, to them. And they go to the, they get, you know, they go to the mint. And they get all the cash. They give the cash out on loan to the banks. So the banks have to pay back with, with interest to the Fed. And then the Fed pays back with interest to the United States. So all these people that are saying the United States is poor, that's... That's not true. The, the government makes money in that way. We do, we're, we're running a huge deficit, 
But all your gold's in Fort Knox. I don't think it's going anywhere. The Fed has some gold too. I think they just they have that around for emergencies or something. But technically, they they work for the the federal government. It, it, they we hire them to work for us basically, and they make good on the loans that we give them. But they go out and they take all that money from us. You know, they take that money and you, the payments on your house loan and. Uh, when you go to the ATM and you have to zip zip and it charges you three bucks, I mean, everyone gets charged three bucks when they do that. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of three bucks for just having something plugged into the wall and no real actual thing, uh, like no product is being given to you, you're just getting the paper, you know? So th these people are making money hand over fest. What they're doing with it. It's 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 not enough, you know. They should they should treat it like a business. The government should treat their budget like a business. They should be in the business to stay abreast with business, not to overshadow them, not to be you know way below them and and not even making a profit at all. They should they should be right about where business is at, but stay there. Because the government can't set other people's prices, but if they're going to pay somebody something, they always pay them decent. So far, so good. I was in the military. They pay their people good. I know that the people who work at every government job I've ever heard of, they pay their people good. So if the people who have skilled, like skilled people who went to college for stuff, like I'm, I'm a chemistry major, they could do uh, research projects. They could do all kinds of stuff. That's that's a little further down the list. I'm going slow here. I'm going to try and round it off at 20 minutes or, or, or less. So we got a... Uh, so the um, the federal state square is an idea I got. It's like a, a, some, something like what the Romans did. And we did a lot of this too, like under Roosevelt. Just It's almost sort of like busy work, but it's so much better than that. Because you get monuments, you get... People who do sculptures who beautify the area. You got, um, you know, uh, people doing the arts and cinema and plays and a lot of libraries. I know the library in my town shut down. You know, they could they could help people open up them libraries. Not a lot of people go to work at a library, but some people, anyways. And uh, I think that even though with the health crisis going on right now. It might not be a bad idea to have something something like the public baths. I've seen some cities, they have like a sprinkler you can run through or something, you know? But there's no reason why people that are homeless have to beg and hope that people let them use the shower sometimes or go take a dip in the questionable lake down the street. Um, we could do better than that, you know? Greatest country in the world, I think we could do better than that. And it would make our country look really good. People would visit and they'd say, wow, this is nice, right? So then uh, another thing we could do is buy the housing dip and uh, rent out uh, the apartments at, you know, at competitive prices. Like, not not less than that. They should buy them, you know, for what they're asking for, like what they're worth. They should pay, you know, pay those people what it's worth, not just get the cheapest places they can find. Because there's two, two family, three fam, there's like all kinds of different situations with people who need a place to stay that are working that, that they can't afford a place that's big enough for them and their kids. And so the government ju doesn't just need like big um, tenement buildings or, or like hotels or dormitories or something where it's all like you're crammed in there because it's not all just single people anyways and even a single p person could you know maybe have just a regular house it doesn't have to look like government housing is what i'm getting at and they could charge if they own the land then they could charge a little less for rent you know and people that might in the in the grand scheme of things make it so that houses were affordable for everyone and it, if the government's buying the place at the market level, you know, then, then who cares what they do with it after? And, and for people who are renting, um, 
I suppose that could hurt them. But a lot of people that are renting, they're, they're being forced to rent out for less because people, they, they just, they, they don't have it. They, they don't have the money to rent. And the people that do have the money to rent are already renting. So maybe it's time we, uh, we gave people a chance at having a, a living wage, you know? And it, it, it's, it's one or the other. Either the, the price of the apartments come down or the minimum wage has to go up. And I, I personally don't really like inflation too much, so I'm not sure. I'll let the, uh, the mathematicians figure that one out. Another thing we could do that the government could do to, to make back some money, like at the end of the day, all the humanitarian stuff they do, they could do it in such a way where they still turn a profit or at least break even. They should try and make a little profit so that when they don't break even, they don't go you know, into, into more debt that way. You know, so we could, uh, instead of giving the money to the Fed and just having them do whatever they want, whatever, whatever it is that they do, um, either the Fed or, or the government itself could invest across the board in, in like the whole of the stock, like all the stocks that are traded that are, that are more safe, the more like the S&P 500, for instance, or something that, that is almost guaranteed to have a return. And then uh, if they did that, like if they, if they put out like dates that they were going to do that and things like that, it could actually have an effect on the economy that would make the economy a little bit more predictable. Like certain times of the year you would know, well, I can invest right now because I know the price of the stock's going to go up once the government reinvests in, in the stocks that they always invest in. So that could add a little bit of um, incentive to the people who are really up there who know who who just want to make make a buck they could uh they could make a buck just by that knowledge that would of course be open source for everybody to know because everything the government does and they're great about this they tell people what's going on they i mean whether whether you want to actually believe the numbers i mean some people are conspiracy theorists I, they they say how much gold they got they say down to, and, and they put that they put out all the stats for everything they have the the bureau of statistics we live in a great country that's constantly helping people, dropping food and stuff on, on starving countries, you know. Um, and we got a lot of smart people, and everyone's been going to school, everyone's been going to university, everyone's trying to have that one up so that they can be, you know, get themselves into a good, good situation. So we definitely have enough smart people that we could all put our heads together and come up with something better. Uh, I think we should make it easier to get a business license. This is a local, uh, local uh, government kind of a thing. Uh, I know that at least where I'm at, if you want to have a lemonade stand, it's going to cost you somewhere between a thousand and two thousand bucks by the time you're done, and they're going to expect you to pay them some amount every year to reissue that license to you. I think that a lot of that's kind of antiquated. I don't know how many people are applying for these licenses, but I think that if someone wants to start a business and they make under a certain amount. Maybe they could waive some of that stuff, you know what I'm saying? Maybe maybe they could make it a little bit easier for people to do things like that, you know? Um, also, I think that we could make it, uh, we could reduce the, the, the number of offenses that result in loss of license. Because once you lose your license, you're not going to be able to get around. You're not going to be able to find that job where you do fit in. You're not going to be able to, to support yourself or your family. And um, a lot of times, if you, there's like a lot of misdemeanors. There's a lot of crimes that have nothing to do with driving that they just right away, they take your license. And it, what, it, what it really does, what it, what it amounts to is you take away their life and then some people, if they're already going down that road, that they... They just say, well, you know, I gotta find a crooked way to live because I can't find a straight one. And I, I'm, I feel bad for people that get stuck in a situation like that, and and you know, they, from there it's all downhill, and that's uh, that's not something we should be promoting. We should try and make it so that it's more difficult to lose your license. It shouldn't be like the first thing they do. The RMV in general just has too much power. Um. So. Uh, yeah, and if you if you get a if you get like a little lemonade stand, like a vendor's license someplace, I live next to the beach. That might be part of it. I mean, what are you gonna break even? 
by the end of the year, you gotta work all year to see if you break even. It just seems a little silly to me. And then you got um you got thirty five million people lost their jobs in the recent depression. Thirty five million. We can't even make one point nine million jobs a year. We thirty five million people lost their jobs. And we were already forty percent of the population can't afford a place to live. They have to they have to live somewhere else. They can't have a car. They can't have both. They can't have a place to live in a car. They they just can't afford it. Minimum wage is not gonna do that for you. And then as far as the people that are in poverty, the people that don't even make enough to make like four times what it costs for them to eat, uh, those people, they're everywhere. Living in tent cities behind your Walmarts. Go check it out. So uh, tax cuts. I think we should cut taxes even more. I think we should t cut taxes for uh, the rich and the poor. And instead, we should, um, we should hire people. And the tax cuts would be if uh, small businesses, they want another worker, like their business would run better with another employee, but they can't really afford another employee, then we could give them a tax cut for almost up to all of that person's wages. Um, and I know that sounds pretty extreme, but um, that's another way that we could get people um, some jobs and everything. But if we're going to do that, that comes with a caveat because everything I said, it I mean, it has to profit in the end. So if we're going to do that, we have to balance that out with something like a federal sales tax or something. The thing about a sales tax, if we cut all the other taxes and put a sales tax in place, right? The people that are poor, they don't buy things as often. They don't buy as much stuff, right? So it wouldn't hurt them as much. If I go to the store and I spend 50 bucks, and there's even a 10% sales tax, then I'm only looking at 55 bucks, you know? It's not really going to hurt me. If you're out there buying cars and stuff, well, you know, it's probably not going to hurt you that much either. When they get you on your income, before you even get to do anything with it, um, you don't have a chance to invest it. You don't have a chance to like maybe buy some more tools or something or whatever you do for a living, like advance yourself, buy some software or whatever. Um, so, I, you know, I think that they could do better. And also, so yeah, the sales tax is much easier to enforce and you get uh, the, the sales tax, it, it gains on every time the money changes hands. So, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to make everyone go broke or anything, but the government's been in deficit for long enough that maybe people should start thinking about maybe just changing up the taxes to something that makes more sense. The people that are buying stuff all the time, if there's a sales tax, they're really not even gonna notice the sales tax. It, it wouldn't even change things that much. And also, if, uh, if there's other things that can be done, like maybe having, I had an idea where the, like the government has, like they rent out mall space, like all the, these malls that are closing, they could buy up all the malls and then they could charge a little less rent than they used to charge at these malls to have these companies come in there. And that's nothing but profit. If they own the land and they're just renting out the storefronts, that's nothing but profit. So they could put one of those on, on like the federal state um, squares that I was talking about with like a library and everything. They could have like a really nice building that you walk into, so it's like federal state mall or something. Everyone could have one, it could be the next big thing. And uh, you know, malls make, they make a ton of money. And we, they don't even have to like, they don't have to rip off business as much. So all of these different things that I just said, here's what'll happen. If you do all of those things, then it wouldn't matter how much stimulus you gave people. You could just give them a gift every so often if you wanted to. And there wouldn't be any inflation because the government would be able to still continue to sell them products through their stores and from their, their merchandise. You know, at least their line of stuff wouldn't be uh, any, they wouldn't, they wouldn't go up with everybody else. The government can't tell other people how much their stuff is worth. That's, that's a dictatorship. That's, that's never going to work. Because uh, 
and it, the economy is, it's a fluid thing, you know? Prices go up and down and everything. Just for standard run-of-the-mill stuff, the price wouldn't go up. You know, if, if you want to buy the next big thing, the next PlayStation 4, you want some fancy lighting in your house or something like that, then you're not going to be able to get the stuff that you get um, that the government produces. Because uh, I see that as being... Like, you know, they'll, they'll put out things that are like, you know, Kmart level, Walmart level, Target level. They're not going to be putting out that high-end stuff that the rich people want because it looks great and it makes them feel rich. You know, I don't want to take that away from them. I think they deserve it. They work hard, too. They, they take all the risk. They take all the risk when they, when they hire people and pay them money. Because if they go out of business, then they're, they're screwed. But the, the worker, he's guaranteed his wages, at least, you know. I want everyone to profit. So in, in, this, in this scenario, in, in this system that, I, that I'm coming up with, it would basically be every, the, anyone who wanted to work. And all, I'm not saying to change any other systems. Don't change anything else. Just the things I said. And it would completely fix everything to where the government would actually be profitable. The people who fall below a certain level could get up to around the $50,000 range. People are still going to need to work making that much, so it's not like there's not going to be people working because every, if they just give everyone money, a lot of people aren't going to want to work. They're just going to keep their hand out wanting more money. So if people have the option of making money instead of going for the unemployment route, maybe they go to a new place that the government could have called the employment office, and they could see if there's any job that meets their, their skill set that they could do inside of the government so that the government could make a profit off of their labor and they could get paid a, a, a better wage than they would have made working at some corporate place. Because what's happened over this last couple hundred years is that there's been more and more people and, and there's also been more and more in industry. There's been more innovation, there's been more technology so that they don't really need all these people to do anything and and some people are saying well everyone deserves to have money and they should just give everyone money but no because history has showed us that inflation is a real thing and it's something that we have to take into consideration and i don't think that after when the government gets their money back from the fed with interest and they just burn all those bills because it basically represents what's what's in the in the treasury they they get their iou back and they rip it up and they don't have to do that if it was the system i was saying and they had all that then they could give stimulus out and everyone could get rich and the price of normal things wouldn't go up the price of high end things might go up a little bit but the price of normal everyday things wouldn't necessarily go up. And if they, you know, gave out some stimulus here and there, maybe, you know, for New Year's or something, they throw everyone like 5,000 bucks so they can buy whatever they wanted, or like Black Friday, give everyone a little bit of money, that'd be cool, you know. But in moderation, they have to have real economists, real mathematicians looking at this stuff constantly looking out for other countries bringing in counterfeit money to just make it appear that we're we're in a, in a place where we should be raising um, the price of things uh, people will pay more and more and more for something until it's the straw that broke the camel's back and that's just the sad truth and when that happens the people that are selling them that stuff they don't want to come down on their prices because at this point, everything that's about their life has changed and now they, they have more bills. So they have to charge you that much so that they can keep going. And that's a bubble. And I think that instead, a little bit of inflation is fine. Like they said, don't change anything else. But they could have a lot more fun with it. And I think that they, everyone could have a higher quality of life. And the people that are rich 
they're going to be twice as rich because 50% of people ain't working now and if 50% more people become consumers and that means that the entire economy, the entire stock market is going to go up, it's going to double or it ought to, it ought to double. Ask some mathematicians if I'm right. I'm a chemist. I've taken calculus. This isn't a DARPA hard question. And I think the, uh, the people who are really rich, they should think about it because even if the guy that was under you gets a mansion, if you're the super rich, you could get a place in orbit around the earth. You could have a, a house. You could look out your house like, like it's the Jetsons. And if it's a population problem, we're almost ready to go to space. And there's also other countries that hate us. So it might not even be that there's a, a problem with the population. The government might want us to have more people, more babies. I don't know. But whatever it is, we shouldn't just blindly keep throwing money at it. We should figure out a real solution. And that's, that's my take. My name's Doug Bissett. I usually do a science channel. I go to the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. I am nonpartisan. I don't believe in politics. I think they're all crooked. But I do enjoy being an American and living in a republic. And I love democracy. And I hope that this finds its way to the president or some really smart people who know the president before we all make a huge mistake like so many countries before us have. All right, have a good one.